Welcome back guys, this week Valve Software goes into space with 3D printing, we've got more live events, Bugatti going nuts, a Fibonacci house, and a little bit of desktop metal right here on Vision Miner 3D Printing News. So, starting off, we've got Valve and Rocket Lab to launch an additive gnome into space. Space! Valve Software's Gabe Newell is getting into space exploration, just like so many other billionaires out there. And of course, following Valve's tradition, it's different from the rest. Valve will be working with aerospace firm Rocket Lab to launch a 3D printed gnome into space. The stunt is being performed to aid the pediatric unit at the Starship Children's Hospital in New Zealand, and the companies have pledged to donate $1 USD for every streamer of the launch within the first 24 hours. All for a good cause, I love it. So this really marks a new day with corporate sponsored space exploration. The meme known as Noam Chomsky is originally a character from Valve's Half-Life 2 Episode 2, specifically the Little Rocket Man achievement, where you can carry the Chomsky gnome all the way until the end of the game. The gnome, which is going to be 150 millimeters of 3D printed titanium, is set to be attached to the rocket and launched into space this November 15, 2020. That's this coming Sunday. Sadly though, the gnome will be attached to the rocket's kick stage, meaning that it will burn up upon re-entry into the atmosphere. That's really too bad because it would have made a great addition to their already awesome front lobby. Uh, with classics, you know, in there like the, the crowbar from Half-Life and the giant valve they've got. Uh, really cool place. Moving right along, we've got a quick note on live events. Form Next is going on right now by the time you see this video, and AMS 2021 is coming up this February. Check out the links in the description and go register. Why not? Next, we've got how Bugatti 3D printed titanium parts for an insane power to weight ratio. The experimental study of the Bugatti Bolide is a track-oriented hyper sports car featuring a W16 engine combined with a minimal body for maximum downforce. Bugatti states, we are perpetually aiming for new and exciting goals, and the question that we always keep in mind is, what if? And that's from Stefan Winkleman, the president of Bugatti. We asked ourselves how we could realize the mighty W16 engine as a technical symbol of the brand in its purest form. With solely four wheels, an engine, a gearbox, a steering wheel, and, as the only luxury, two seats. The Bugatti Bolide is the most extreme, uncompromising, fastest, and lightest vehicle concept in the company's recent history, with an incredible power to weight ratio of 0.67 pounds per horsepower. This is made possible by the combination of their W16 engine with 1,824 horsepower and 1,300 foot pounds of torque while only weighing about 2,733 pounds. The Bugatti Bolide achieves figures that are almost on par with Formula One, while its top speed is well above 310 miles per hour, without compromising maximum handling and maximum agility. The Bolide takes 3 minutes and 7 seconds to lap Le Mans, and only 5 minutes and 23 seconds to get around the Nürburgring. All the screws and fasteners are made completely out of titanium. In addition, hollow, thin-walled functional components made from an aerospace titanium alloy are used in many places. These, of course, are 3D printed and with extremely thin wall thicknesses of down to 0.5 millimeters. However, they're still extremely stable with tensile strengths over 180,000 PSI. Now, Bugatti's not new to 3D printing, uh, even for final parts. They've already produced several components by additive, uh, including brake calipers and spoilers. Crazy stuff. I love what they're doing. If you haven't already, hit that like and subscribe button. It lets us know that you enjoyed our content and it helps other people discover it through the YouTube algorithm. Uh, and if you have a suggestion, we love comments too. Moving right along, we've got a sneak peek at the upcoming Fibonacci house by 20 Additive Manufacturing. They're a 3D printed concrete startup with a presence in the Netherlands and Canada. They sell a range of concrete 3D printers and also print on demand for projects that make sense logistically. Their next high-profile construction 3D printing project is the Fibonacci House. Their facility in British Columbia is on a beautiful lakeside plot of land with tons of room for growth, and uh, Jim, the founder and tech lead, is regularly printing out new objects for client projects and company projects that will be placed on the grounds permanently. They print in two main classes of material. One is a special compound with accelerate that gets mixed in at the nozzle, and the other is more akin to regular, you know, mixed concrete. Uh, it's strong enough to support the subsequent layers on top of itself before finally curing. 
Now, with the accelerate, 20 is able to print overhanging structures and bridge gaps that regular concrete would uh, basically not work and require complex formwork to build. Uh, the drawback of the mix, though, is the cost. Currently, they're working on the finishing touches of a 3D printed house they call the Fibonacci house because it conforms to the Fibonacci sequence. This seemingly small structure will have two lofted rooms for the ability to sleep up to four people. All the printed parts have been completed already, but they're just waiting on the local contractors to finish up the details like the ceiling, the windows, and the utilities. Uh, many other practical objects have been printed around the facility, including staircases, uh, storm drains, foot bridges, and various pieces of furniture. They're also innovating. They're building a mobile printing apparatus with the operational code name Tilicum, which is a massive robotic arm from ABB attached to a gantry system welded to a trailer so that the entire thing can be towed to any destination. They do say that right now, most people want it to be the cheap option. Oh, 3D print my house, it'll take no labor, etc. But in reality, it's a value option. Realistically, the designs that you can achieve with printing are far more cost-friendly than their handmade counterparts. Now, if you just want a regular rectangular house and you're looking for the cheapest option, then maybe 3D printed houses aren't for you. That being said, in the coming years, as the technology expands and architects get more proficient at designing for the machines, the value proposition is going to continue to grow. Would you like to live in a 3D printed house? Why or why not? Leave a comment below or take us in Twitter, LinkedIn, or Facebook. Next, we've got Desktop Metal introducing Live Center. Now, this is a software solution designed to eliminate the trial and error required to achieve high accuracy parts via powder metal based additive manufacturing processes like binder jetting. Live Sinter not only corrects for the shrinkage and distortion that's usually found during sintering, but it also opens the door for geometries that without the software would present significant challenges when they do get sintered. So by improving the shape and dimensional tolerances of sintered parts, uh, first time part success for complex geometries is greatly improved and the cost and time associated with post processing are minimized. In many cases, the software even enables parts to be sintered without the use of supports. Now, while it is compatible with any sintering based powder metallurgy process, uh, Life Sinter is going to be first available to customers with a shop system, which is shipping in late 2020, and the production system shipping in 2021. Moving right along, we've got the news blitz plenty of going on this week, guys, so let's dive right in. We've got the US Air Force concluding their advanced manufacturing Olympics with five technical challenge winners. We've got continuous composites opening a 7,500 square foot demonstration for composite 3D printing. Tyler, that's awesome to hear. Uh, definitely gonna have to make a trip up to Idaho soon to see that. Uh, next, we've got Ascentium's unique approach to aerospace 3D printing. Much more on this soon. We've got Hot Wheels using 3D printing to miniaturize real life custom cars. In investor news, we've got 3D systems selling Simitron to Battery Ventures for $65 million. And a 3D PBM research market study finding that composites additive manufacturing will generate over $10.6 billion in yearly revenue by 2030. Next, we've got Vertex and Algorand, and they're building a blockchain-powered digital marketplace for aerospace additive manufacturing. Anyway, let us know down below what you thought of this episode or any news stories you thought were cool, and of course, leave a funny comment. You have the opportunity to make it into the next episode, seriously. Like, the chances are pretty high. Send in your best prints or ways that you've used additive in your business, and we'll feature you, your business, or your channel on the next episode. Here at Vision Matter, we specialize in high temperature, high performance thermal plastics, the machines to 3D print them, the tools to make it easier, and if you don't want to do it yourself, we'll do it for you in our service. So if you're into that sort of thing, give us a call or shoot us an email. We love hearing from you. And other than that, have a positive rest of your day, and I'll see you on the next video.